There we go. We're gonna have to. Oh, we've been live for four minutes. <laughs> Hopefully, we didn't say any swear words or anything like that. No, we were just. A <laughs> we're gonna give a new start here in just a second. A new start. Okay. Yeah, we'll just like introduce ourselves, and then I can trim out the beginning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello, hot chocolate Sunday. Uh, let me start that audio recording real quick. All Go right. ahead and start talking, and we'll get. Well, hello guys. It's Jenny and Paul with the Go Box. Paul is adjusting and recording right now, um, and we are live. And it's a um, unusual Sunday night video from us, but we wanted to get our first uh, painting from the Go Box kit for March done and out of the way. And that is blue hydrangeas. This one was super fun to paint. A little bit uh, different from my normal style, and it's one that we paint the back. Paint the background in later. <laughs> I kicked the chair. <laughs> so, um, right. yeah, we didn't mean to match tonight either. That was t totally accidental. We sat down. I took my cardigan off and sat. we sat down and looked at ourselves in the monitor and <laughs> like, hmm. what did we do? What did we do? <laughs> we do this all the time, actually. It's, the, come, it's probably just from being married for all the Actually, it's because many, you told many me years. I need to put it a different shirt on before we left the house. That's true, I did, because I, I noticed your shirt had, like, white little lint or something all over it. Because I picked the dog up. <laughs> no, it wasn't It wasn't dog hair. It was no. lint. Okay. So anyway, um, if you're just finding us, we are um, with, well, we're GoBox Art Crate is a subscription box that comes out monthly, two projects a month with the paint and the instruction sheets, and uh, you guys got stickers this month. I hope, hopefully uh, you guys found those. They were, they were pretty small, <laughs> so they might have got lost in the packaging. You, you really had a lot of fun uh, making. I have like six those. months of stickers designed, so you guys will get one every month. I guess I should drink this this way. Yeah, oh yeah, these are our new GoBox Art Crate mugs. Now where do they find these? These are available via our website at gobox.com. Okay. I feel like Good Mythical Morning now. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's, Maybe not quite like that. Let's paint about it. <laughs> let's paint about that. Okay, so in your kit, which you don't have to have, you can do the video along with us with your own paint, your own canvas, or I've had people paint rocks along with us. You know, they do the, the exact same painting, but on a completely different surface. So whatever you're using, you can do that. If you do have the kit, you'll have your instruction sheet. Let's go ahead and zoom in. First, let's do a toast. It's toast to... Sunday night painting. Sunday night awkward beginnings. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Being live for four minutes without knowing. Mm -hmm. Well, usually we have the uh, live streams pre-scheduled, so it, it uh, doesn't just start. It's his fault. It is. <laughs> I'll be... Uh, totally take the blame on that. <laughs> you hit live. You hit go live. Okay, so here's the painting. Um, this was actually loosely inspired by... A friend of mine named Rachel Thomas, and I love her flowers that she paints. They're amazing. So I sat down and and I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt flowers because I, I don't normally paint flowers. They're they're relatively new. Um, why are we out of focus there? Oh, I guess it's just that. Okay. Uh, oh, I was looking up hydrangeas. So yeah, flowers are a relatively new thing for me. I know you guys got the peonies recently. Was that last month? Peonies? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, it was, yes, it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this rose here is loosely done the you know, same way. Um, and yeah, it's really slightly abstract. I don't, didn't, I tried not to allow myself to paint individual flower shapes. You, there's a few in there that I wanted right on top just because I wanted it to look like hydrangeas. <laughs> but for the most part, I, purposely tried to keep it really loose because that's a goal of mine. I tend to um, be a little more rigid when I paint. I need, I need to loosen up in a lot of ways. Yeah, you're kind of, <laughs> you feel a little uptight to me tonight. I was a little uptight tonight. Yeah. We just got all of our Go Box shipments out and it's just been go, 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 G-O-G-H all weekend and all week last week. So, um, yeah, I... Hey, let's get painting. We're, get painting. Al we're almost nine minutes into this okay, live stream. Sorry, guys. All right. Well, that's because four minutes was yeah. accidental. Let's look at our colors. So you'll have your primary colors. Um, we have sapphire, ruby, daffodil, black and white. And then your bonus color this month was Bahama blue, which I love. You guys have gotten that before if you have been a subscriber for a while. We send that one out frequently. And then brush-wise, uh, some of you guys have this little four-pack. 
Some of you upgraded to the six pack. This is a nice one. I think they're $14 on our site. These are 12, right? Yep. And then some of you may have this set. This is the set Paul's gonna paint with. This is also our $12 set. These are great brushes. We've used them in our studio for about eight years. Yep, they're kind of a, a little bit of an upgrade from the others. That's why you only get three yeah. for 12 bucks. Yeah. Um, but these are, these these ones are brushes we use on our own too. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint our canvas, entire, entire canvas charcoal gray. So let's pick up our biggest brush to start. Go ahead and dip it in the water cup. Those of you with brand new brushes, I just opened a brand new pack tonight because I had messed up my old ones on accident. I left no. them in paint the other day. Uh-oh. Uh, one of them, anyway. So go ahead and, uh, if you've got new brushes, they have a little crispy coat on, on them to keep them, the bristles all tight in. They're kind of like Skittles. Yeah, so you just have to loosen that up in the water. Hey, just, there's Skittles I push in there. It, I push it like that on the bottom of the cup on both sides and that'll loosen it up. Let's make charcoal gray. So that's mostly black with a little white. Mm. So you know what, I'm just gonna scrape off. This is, I think the only time we use black. Scrape off a little white, bring it over. Hopefully you guys are having a good Sunday night. I'm actually feeling good now. <laughs> I think I just had to get here and get set up and get going. So there we go, deep charcoal gray. If it's, even if it's black, it would be fine. But I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up because I want this area to dry first because we're gonna be painting some flowers over it and just do a thin coat, really thin coat here. Even if you have tiny little speckles of white showing through, that's fine. Sometimes it wouldn't be, but in this case, since we're gonna be painting over this. Yeah, in this painting, we bring the, uh, we bring the background color down to the flowers. I feel like you need to slide your canvas up a little bit there. Oh, I don't want to knock this one off. So just back and forth or side to side or write somebody's name you don't like and cross it out. What? <laughs> whatever, whatever brush strokes get you to... What are you, in junior yeah. high school? <laughs> you know, sometimes I am. Depends on how petty the situation is. <laughs> no, I try to avoid that at all costs. I got out of that. I got out of the, the high school drama a while back. When so. you graduated two years ago? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Well, it kind of looks like the way the sky looked in Oregon in times today. Yeah, today was um, what we call fake spring. Yep. <laughs> Where you, you look outside, and it's actually this morning it was super sunny, so I was upstairs just doing some cleaning and stuff, and then all of a sudden it's like, wow, it got really dark. And sure enough, there came the rain. Here comes the <laughs> rain again. <laughs> that was so funny that we were alive. That's yeah. always awkward. It's like... <laughs> Yeah, I could have been like scratching my butt or something in the background, setting up the camera. <laughs> or it might have been you going, can you just relax? Can you just chill out a little bit? You're really messing with my vibe. Or me complaining about the... Um, it's good enough. It's good, it's kicking, good enough. Kicking the camera. Oh yeah, it's good enough. Zoom in. No, no. Okay, zoom in. Yeah, do that. Okay. I think we were doing that. <laughs> I think it was actually live while I was readjusting. We just kind of changed our camera setup. Uh, and this is actually the first video we're doing with uh, the new overhead lighting uh, and clamp system. And um, so there was a little bit of adjusting that needed to happen before we started going live. And I think you guys got to see the end. So a little quick behind the scenes <laughs> at GoBox, Sherwood, Oregon. So this is a 12 by 12 canvas. First time we've used this in the GoBox. That's right. You guys have used the 10 by 10 birch panels. Those are fun. We love those. We actually had a little debate at the beginning when we were first conceptualizing GoBox about using just the 12 by 12 canvases. Yeah, we did. That's right. That's right. This month I hired a local high schooler to uh, help us get everything packed. You packed a lot of your boxes this month. So that, that was fun this week. He's a great worker. His mom's a great person, so 
I knew he would be one too, yeah. That was, he was a big help this week. So I'm gonna wash the brush off. And you know, he didn't get overly distracted by the puppy. No, no, we have our puppy here until she can be big enough to stay home. And yeah, she gets, she wants to untie everyone's shoes throughout the day. True. And she wants all the attention all the time. So I'm just cleaning this off really good. If you take care of your brushes really well, which I didn't because I was working on a commission painting the other day and I came in today and I had left one sitting on the paint palette, like literally in the paint like that. Wow. And You're fine. I was just like, I couldn't believe it. I could hear my dad lecturing me. He used to lecture about brushes so much, but honestly, if you t keep um, care of these really well, they'll last you a really long time. Just some warm soapy water. I actually will, at home, I just put squirt a little soap in my hand, like dish soap, and run my hand under the water while I swirl the brush around like this, and then rinse it, and then reshape it, and let it dry, and they're they're great. They last forever. Paul's brushes don't last forever, though. They do, too. <laughs> I still, got my, I still got my brushes from college. Yeah. So I'm just kind of buying some drying time right now. <laughs> You can uh, use a hair dryer. You can pause the video, use a hair dryer if you need to speed things up, especially if you used a thicker coat of paint. But um, yeah, we're, we're just gonna hang tight and let it dry. One thing you can do, you can paint the sides so that it matches the background later on when you bring this in. So you're, now you're asking them to take more time. If they want, I mean, yeah. just drying time. That can That's be true. done later. But um, yeah, we're gonna paint these giant I just call them hydrangea balls. That's basically what they are. Two floating ones at the bottom of the canvas. I need to not set that there. I need to let it dry. And um, we paint the leaves on after that. We build the rose. Then we come in with this seafoam green and then later on with some more turquoise. So there, there's three steps to the background in this painting and I love the way that looks. I was talking to my friend Rachel. Uh, she's Rachel Thomas Art on Instagram. I highly recommend you check out her page. Follow it. Uh, and I think she's, I don't know if she's A, I think she's, yeah, I think she's Rachel A-E-L, you know, because some of them are just E-L. And, That's uh, true. Yeah. So I was talking to her, and we were just saying how painting the background in last is, like, the f our favorite part, because you don't really know what it's going to look like. You can visualize it, but when you finally do paint it in, it's like that kind of ooh and ah moment. Yeah, it and just it's so completely against completely transforms your painting. It's so against the grain of the traditional approach that I take to painting, so it's going to be unusual. Yeah, you'll. I think you might get addicted to painting the I background in later. Doubt it, but we'll see. I, I'm not saying I won't like it. I'm just saying I won't get addicted to it probably. But yeah, and I, I've done it before. Um, all that, all, all the week, the same week I designed this, I did a bunch of flower paintings in the same style and there was one that I changed the background color maybe three times just because not being happy with how it looked and so it's fun you can change it as much as you want let us know so, what you think guys think about doing flower yeah, paintings when you you know type in the little comment field do you like doing <laughs> feel free to comment yeah I see some of you on here thank you for joining us I'm yeah. glad that you came on and you're in at a really awkward time because we're w literally watching paint dry yeah. Oh, that's what I was. I was wondering why you said hot chocolate. I see hot chocolate Sunday. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for saying hi. I was wondering why you said hot chocolate. I was like, mm, she okay. might have literally just, or she, he <laughs> could it be he. Could hot be chocolate it? Sunday may have literally just been going like, I've been watching these people readjust the camera for four minutes. I'm going to say something. <laughs> like, is anyone there? Hello. Is <laughs> there anybody in there? So here is our sheet. Yeah. Um, with the instructions. So if you do get the go box, you get one for each painting and it goes through. A lot of people like to just follow the sheets. I think it's great to have this as a reference while you follow us on video because video is a little easier and we can go into a lot more depth than what we can fit on here. I can see Eric, our graphic designer, really <laughs> squeeze the text in there. Oh, I can tell you wrote the instructions for that one. Yeah. Well, I write yours up too. That's true. So there's a there's a background on the back is the, the photo of the final product. Let's show your painting really quick. It's oh, on the floor oh, next here, to you yeah, here it is. while we're waiting for this to dry. So next week we'll be doing this one. It's called Irish Ruins. This one will be a lot of fun. It's got, it's very Paul and it's really loose. If you look up close, I'm going to do my fancy zoom in. 
you can see how loose and free that is. And, but when you zoom out, it looks like castle ruins. And same with your rock wall. Up close, it's just, you know, paint, paint strokes. And then, like here, up, just paint strokes. And then you get it far away. And, wow, that's really a crumbling old rock wall. And the way you put your, did your field, it looks like water at first, and then you build the green on it. So yeah, the steps cool. on that one are kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. That'll be fun to do. It'll be an excellent journey for... And you know what? We're going to be doing it, like, literally right around St. Patrick's Day, because that's next weekend. Fanning this. You're... Wait, is it? Yeah. Isn't it? No. What day? What's today? Today's the 7th. Uh, what day is St. Patrick's 17th. Day? 17th. This is the 17th? Okay. Well, it's close, though. But everybody will be celebrating St. Patrick's Day next weekend, so nobody's going to be painting with us because they're That's all going right. to be... That's right. That's well, so, right. You know what we should do? We should do some Irish cream and coffee while we do our... I love that. Let's do let's it. Let's do it. Okay, this is dry enough. I see some wet spots. See those glossy spots? Those are wet paint, but I see a lot of dry spots, too. What we do next gets built upon like crazy, so having it a little bit wet is totally fine, and I don't just want to sit here and mumble around and mumble, <laughs> make mumble, you mumble. guys wait. Rumble, mumble, so let's mumble. take our biggest brush, biggest brush. and we it. are going to make a deep violet by mixing sapphire and ruby. It's more blue than, than red, so it's going to be more of a true violet, not like a red violet, like a, a blue violet. Grape soda, that's the color I call it pretty often. So... If you have a situation where it looks too red, the simple solution is add Pull more, more blue. blue. Pull more blue into it. And let's see. And vice versa. I'm trying to think how much of this color. We do use this throughout, so do make a good good chunk of this color. A chunk. Good glob. Good size glob of that. And look, it looks black on the camera. And I want to see how it looks on there. Okay, so that's good, actually. We're going to add some white to it right away. So we're gonna tap out our hydrangea balls, and that's all, all they are. They look like just this big fluffy, look like, they look like a popcorn ball at first. And one is way down here in the corner, and see how I'm doing it? I'm just sort of tapping out the shape. I try not to conform to a perfect circle, so that's why I'm doing this, these raggedy parts that stick out. And then I'm gonna fill that in. Look how I'm moving my brush. I'm flipping it. As I'm painting, dabbing down, I'm going like this as I'm working. You might pick up a little gray paint, don't worry about that. Yeah, this is just kind of like your foundation for the flower itself, right? Yep. So, I do not have the advantage of having painted this before, so my question, I'm gonna do my best to ask the questions that you guys might have. <laughs> like, how big should this be? This is about the size of a very large grapefruit. Okay, that's kind of what I was saying. <laughs> Like those really big ones that you usually find in Asian food, Asian grocery stores. And also, uh, you don't want to leave any gray showing through the middle. Around the edges is fine, but we want a nice full bloom where we don't see anything, any background behind it. Mine, I can tell right here, I tried to avoid the edge, but I'm going to actually go off the edge because it will look a lot better that way and more natural. So the next one is just a little bit higher up. And it does touch this one. So go ahead and tap it out first. It comes real close to the side. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it doesn't matter how large you make these. That's the, it. The larger that you make them, the less leaves you have to paint. Let's just say that. <laughs> and the less background you have to do. Yeah, the background's fun, though. And yeah, I'm just going to try to make the, the edges a little raggedy. Had a lot more wet gray paint in there. I'm already running out of the purple. Just mix as you go. So the word hydrangea, I was reading a little bit about him. Oh, tell us. It means water vessel. Really? It's from the Greek Greek word that means water vessel. It's because of the way they're... Oh, hydra. Yeah, duh. Yeah, it's the way they're... What did it say? The way their buds are shaped or something. But... I knew this before even looking it up, that the color of the hydrangea is depends on how acid your soil is. That's true. You know, some people will put, um, like, nails in. Oh, really? Yeah, because then it releases. See a couple of Muppets. <laughs> it picks up the minerals from the metal. 
Cool. That's, yeah, and coffee grounds probably have yeah. something to do with that, too. I, the only reason I knew that is because my mom, she had these glorious blue ones that looked just like the ones. I thought about hers constantly while painting this painting. And um, she was telling me years ago it's it's because of her, the way their soil is. Now, out where she lives, they have the red clay soil. So I don't know if that's more acidic or less. No idea. All right, let's get a little white in here. I, you might need to make a little more grape soda. And I pick up just a small amount of white with the corner of my brush, like so, and just dab it in there. And I'm going to add a little more. It's just kind of a guessing game. If it's turning too blue, like mine is definitely turning a little too blue, I'm going to put a little more red back in there. And all I'm looking for is a very marbly mix. So you can see, on, when I say marbly, it's because you've got like veins of color. It's not just one solid mix. And that way, when I dab it on here, you get that effect, which is really cool. What are you looking at? I'm trying to figure <laughs> out which light's creating the glare. Yeah, it's just the wet I mean, yeah, you're going to get obsessed with the lighting again. Yeah, for it's sure. just the the wet paint glare. And as as the painting lightens up a bit, you guys will be able to see it better. And I'll I'll try to tilt it every now and then. Maybe I'll just Now I can't see it. That's funny. So I get the glare when when I <laughs> hold it like well, this. Put it flat. I can adjust some things. Okay. Paul will catch up on the painting. But let's let's dab some of this lighter lavender on there. First thing I'm going to test to see which light it is. So this time I'm doing the same brush motion. I'm using less paint so that um, we get... There we, we go. We see... <laughs> so we see the uh, bits of that deep purple showing through. That's going to give this some depth. So I missed because I was obsessing about the glare. What We just blotted a little white into this and made kind of a marbly mix. Gotcha. Color, so it's not overmixed. That's how you get these cool streaks and bright spots. And you guys can do that. You can continually add little tiny bits of white in and dab it on there. Oh, and you're still using your big brush. Yep. I feel like mine is almost too blue, so I'm going to pull a little more red into this mix. Because blue, you can honestly baby. do, Two blue, baby. you can do uh, tons and tons of different you, colors in here. You verbally just rolled your eyes. I did. I tisked at you. T Tisk. T <laughs> I actually switched to my medium brush for this. So one thing that's super common, and I did it, and you'll probably do it too, you naturally avoid the edges. So now I've got this dark ring around each of these. So I'm going to purposely bring some of the lighter color out just a bit randomly. So you can have some, some areas where it's ringed with dark, but you don't want the whole thing to look like it's like you purposely left it without <laughs> light color. Why'd you do that, Jenny? I don't know. You did it as an opportunity to explain what might be happening That's for other right. people. That's, That's why you did that. <laughs> and now I'm going to wash the brush. We're going to switch down a brush size. So if you're using the white set, you'll use your round brush. How's it going? Oh, that's looking good, Paul, with your with the round brush. I cheated. I already used Bahama. I didn't use white. Oh, you're not supposed to do that yet. It's all right. I feel confident that it'll work. <laughs> all right. Getting this clean is fun. You know, I'm going to use this brush to mix the green color because with the red set, the medium brush, is, it's quite a big difference. It's like, it's not really medium. It goes from large to small. And so this, this larger brush will, will be better for mixing the color. We're going to create a dark teal by mixing sapphire and daffodil, or blue and yellow. We had to give them those fancy names. We started that in the very beginning, and now every time, like, there's there's always some weird thing with it, with the, our single kits we ship out, and it's like the same color. Yeah. Different names. So it's kind of funny. Yeah, single kits, that's something we sell. So you can buy this as a single kit if you don't subscribe to the box. 
Or if you do subscribe to the box and you love how your painting turns out and you want to paint it as a gift for someone, you can buy a single kit. We'll send you the paint and then the uh, video link and all that. Okay, so we're going to create some leaves, but we want to use our smaller brush, so our medium-sized brush. Those of you with the red set, we're going to be using our number eight flat. I want to scrape off as much paint to save the paint out of this big brush, and I'm just going to set it in the water. Oops, that was very clunky. Anymore. Yeah. So go ahead and get your next brush damp. Dip it in the water, kind of lightly push it across the bottom of the cup like this. You don't want to poke it, that'll flare out the brushes. Just do this on the bottom of your cup. And then dry it off. And dip it in your beautiful teal color. So we're going to create, let's see, I started way down here. I just did sort of this like partial leaf shape. We just have a partial leaf showing and fill it in. I'm making all kinds of noise. I and think. then I'll do another one here. And they can overlap. At first it might just look like everything's green. I try to avoid having, like I have this little triangle of gray here. I'll lift this up so you can see that little triangle of gray there. I'm gonna avoid that so I'll just paint over it and I'll just have two leaves that overlap. But at first, right now, it's gonna look funny. And might play with your brain a little. <laughs> we will turn them into leaves. I'm gonna do a leaf off of here. I don't know, I'm trying to leave it. I'm just to go over the monitor. We technically could just paint all of this green, but I like to get going with sort of shaping out the leaves first. I think it will help for the next part. And if you want to do some slightly different shades of green, you could like pull a little more green, uh, daffodil, make a little bit more of a Kelly green, I guess. So that looks kind of cool, having a different shade. I could even overlap one of these with that color just to change it up a bit. How and this is you. not in the instructions, so when you follow the video, you get this extra stuff. And I want to do at least one leaf that's about close to halfway up this hydrangea bloom here. My brush is loud. <laughs> yeah, you, you this are really loud. Weird. Well, I think these uh, these are a little bit stiffer bristles on the white <laughs> handle bristles. So you can see already they're sort of resembling leaves. I mean, kind of. So let's wash our brush now. Clean it off and dry it off. It doesn't have to be 100% like every single drop of green out of it because we're gonna be painting on top of this green anyway. And what I'm gonna do next is have us start framing in the veins on the uh, leaves. So that's these lines that go down and on the, it's basically they're outlined on the sides and then we have these veins in them. And because these are still really, really wet, I use just plain daffodil. And I'm gonna use the skinny edge of the brush now those of you with the white set, you'll want to use your smallest brush for this. So I just go along both sides and it smears in with the green real quick. That's okay. We, we, uh, re we rework this later. So you can completely redraw different leaves if that's easier once you start doing this part. And I'm going to just loosely frame in some little diagonal lines for the veins and the leaves. Use that skinny edge of the brush, or if you're using the white set, you'll use the smallest brush, the very tip of the bristles. Remembering what leaf is what. <laughs> So 
So we just added some fun artist swag to our selection. We just haven't added it to our website, but it's mostly Bob Ross stuff. You guys will enjoy that if you guys like Bob Ross. We have a, a color changing mug and it has Bob Ross on it. He's holding a paintbrush. And it's a black mug and you just see Bob Ross with the paintbrush. And then when you put hot <laughs> coffee or tea, whatever, in the mug, suddenly it like color changes to where his whole painting is behind him. Like the whole entire mug is wrapped with a mountain scene. It's really cute. And we also got a Van Gogh one, which is this exact mug here, which has the ear-shaped handle. I'm trying to show it without dumping water. And his, uh, when you pour hot water in it, he gets a bandage over his ear that appears. So it's called the Disappearing Mug. <laughs> and then we got some fun uh, Bob Ross magnet set that you can, it's, it's like a paper doll, but it's a magnet and you, he comes with all kinds of different outfits some hairband type of outfits. So depending on how you're feeling, you just dress him up on your refrigerator. <laughs> and we got soap. Yes. Uh, I love the Van Gogh one. It says, what does it say? It says soap for, I can't remember. Artist soap for the tortured artist who likes bubbles <laughs> or something like that. It's pretty funny. So those things will be going on our website just for fun. Okay, we're going to lighten up our hydrangea blooms even more. So we're going to go back to our largest brush. Make sure you get all of that green out. Our water is going to turn crazy shades. It's not going to be very pretty because all of these colors <laughs> mixing together. And go ahead and dry it off. Hi, Elise. Hi, Elise. Bales, how are you? Hope you're doing good. Oh, you love painting florals. Yes, good. I'm glad you want to do more of them. Um, I've been trying to come up with some other ideas. I'd like to paint some uh, gladio gladiolas and some of those other tall flowers that are really cool. So that's awesome. Okay, uh, you might need to mix up a little more of your violet. It's turning violet, violet. <laughs> and let's add more white than we did last time. So we want a true lavender right now. And you may find, like I am, that at first if it looks just like it's sky blue, like it's kind of a pale blue, just pull some more red in there. So here's your color. It should be similar to that. Just lavender. Not really pastel lavender. It's just a, I don't know. I don't even know. Maybe dark lavender. And let's, let's go ahead and get some of this on here. Remember to go to the edges once in a while. And once in a while you can, uh, see so I end up with a lot of linear sort of brush strokes. They're like little lines like that. So every once in a while, force yourself to really dab your brush down. So you get some larger, uh, what would be flower petals tucked in with those more angular ones like that. And just move your brush around as you're doing this. Make sure they overlap each other here and there, but you're not completely covering everything because we want some of that background color showing through. Not the background gray, but the background purples. And when you're finished with this painting, you may end up with more of a purple hydrangea or more blue. I've kind of got a little of both. I, I put a little more red in my Lavender, you can do that too. That's really pretty. Just mix a little in there. Maybe this hydrangea has undecided soil. <laughs> Am I acidic or not? I don't know. Today I'll be acidic. <laughs> Today I'll be salty. I'm looking forward to seeing how that hydrangea that we got from my sister recovers. Yeah. Yeah, last, uh, we, re we took a giant hydrangea from her that she was digging up. It's huge. And when we planted it in our yard, 
I thought it was dead. And then, it immediately just was like, bye bye. Well, it was the worst time of year to move it, and then it was followed by a heat wave, and we knew it was a risk. But then, towards the end of the growing season, it started putting out some fresh new leaves. So Indeed. It, it survived, and I'm just going to be curious to see how well it survived. <laughs> so, this is what we should have so far something similar to that. We'll uh, dry our brush off. I cleaned my brush off and we dry it off. And you might still have look like that little bits of lavender coming out of it. That's not a big deal. And I was looking at this and thinking, this could totally be become like a big sunflower painting. These leaves coming out the bottom remind me of sunflower petals and you could honestly do a similar painting, similar vibe with a giant sunflower. So let's see, we're gonna make our rose now. And don't, um, don't be nervous about it because it's such a loosely framed in rose. I cannot paint a realistic rose to save my life. I haven't even really tried. I just, I don't think I have the patience for that. But it's, it's done in stages, layers. We add lots of different layers and highlights and low lights. But it's honestly just a very uh, impressionist type of rose. You look at it and you know it's a flower of some kind, whether a rose or a peony or whatever but it's not done realistically. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> okay, so let's mix a color. Let's take our number eight brush or your me medium round brush if you're using the white set. That's a number four round, I think. And we're gonna mix two parts ruby to one part white. So just scrape off a good glob of ruby and about half the amount of white. Let's, let's see what we got there with that. Ah. Uh. You should end up with, um, it is, gosh, I wouldn't even know what color to call this. It's raspberry. That's what it is. Raspberry. It looks kind of orangey on our monitor there, but maybe on the, the YouTube video it doesn't. It's definitely not orange at all. And keep in mind, people's TVs and monitors are yeah. Yeah. set different too, so. Okay, so to place your rose, you decide where it's going to go. So where I have it, I could put it right here. That seems maybe a little predictable. So I, I put it just to the left of that gap that comes down here. And I'll show you on the instruction sheet for those of you who like to look at that. This is where we're going next. It looks like a blob. Blob. Right now. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and start by making a C, <laughs> a little squished C. And then we're going to do another one that's sort of uh, is hugging that other one and then I keep going around till finally you're doing these sort of dashy shapes and you can use this skinny edge and let, let's see let me grab paper if you're using this flat brush like I am you can do this thing where you press and then lift press and then lift but we're kind of going in a arch For the round brush, there's lots of different things you can do. You can use the very tip of the bristles. You can also press it out, but it's a little bit larger brush than what I'm using here. But really what we want is a series of these little curved kind of C shapes that are kind of hugging each other and overlap into your hydrangea if it works out that way. And you decide what size is done for you. This always reminds me of Van Gogh's Starry Night, the stars, the round stars that have those dashes that surround them all around the star. Like it creates this giant glowing orb, only ours is just a little more squished because we're kind of seeing a, we're not really seeing a top view of the rose, it's kind of like a three quarter view. You'll have bits of the gray background showing in and we're gonna to add to that. Let's go ahead first and paint in our little rosebud. Let's have a look where it is. It is a teardrop shape. And I just have it to the left and up a bit, so it's gonna be floating at first. Feel free to use your smallest brush if you want. But that's all it is. You decide how big it is.
Flowers are pretty fun to paint when they're, when they're loose and free like this. So we're going to lighten up our rosy shade. Now I know that I'm saying this a little late, but those of you who like orangey based, like peachy colored roses, you can put yellow in your red. And when you add white to it, it makes a really pretty color. I was kind of going for like a reddish pink. Okay, so let's add a little more white. We want kind of a bubblegum shade. About like that. This is where if you want to add some yellow in there and make it more peachy, go ahead and do that. Let's add to this. So let's let's go in and we'll we'll put some of these around on some of uh, can't talk. I'm focusing on the gray areas. And then starting in the center, working my way out. And then you can create these other petals. It's fun down here to do these ones that sort of dip out. And we keep adding lighter shades to this as we, as it dries and we work along. And we, we're also going to add a little bit darker shade to kind of detail the middle a little bit better. But we do want to add a bit of this streaky color to the rosebud. So I'm going to use the skinny edge of my brush. Or those of you with the white set, just use the tip of the bristles or even your small brush. And I'm just going to add a few streaks into that. So now we can wash our brush. And you can do as many roses here as you like. So if you find them very easy, or you really like the way they're turning out, feel free to load it up. I just did two, but there's no rule. You create your own bouquet. Okay, so we are going to use the same brush, wash it off. We're going to create a kind of reddish violet. Let's go ahead and just scrape off some sapphire, and you know I'm going to mix it right in here. And I'll put a little bit more red in there. So we want it to be almost burgundy. We're going to use this color to detail the interior parts of the rose. Now you might find it easier to use your smallest brush with both sets. I'm gonna try it out with this medium brush because I like being able to use that razor thin edge. That's kind of like using a small brush or the corner. They're pretty versatile. And I'm gonna start in the middle and then just sort of work my way out. Kind of going in between those, not over the top of those light pink that I just put on there, but maybe over the top of some of that more reddish shade. So what we're doing here is we're adding some shadows and we still add some light color to this. So this isn't the end of our rose. We still have some fun stuff to do. You can also treat this as maybe they're additional rose petals, but I really like how it kind of outlines some of these a little bit and really makes them pop. And then we can add some to here. Just a little, I wouldn't overdo it with this one because it's such a small little bud. <laughs> Let's wash the brush. We're gonna go back to our leaves down here and we're gonna make an avocado green to further detail these veins. So you can see as, as the paint dried, some of them kind of disappeared. That's okay. Let's use this medium brush to mix the color and we'll probably use our smallest brush to paint the color on. So I've already got some of the wet teal color. So I'm just gonna pull more yellow into it, more of the daffodil until I get, it's kind of an avocado green. It's a little bit brighter than avocados are. Like if I were to make a true avocado green, I'd probably put a tiny dot of red into it to mute it. This is about right. 
Let's set this brush in the water. I put a little too much red in mine and I've got day old guacamole. <laughs> You've got the avocado that rotted on the counter. <laughs> Do. So smallest brush, dip it in the water, kind of lightly, I'm lightly roll, brush it across it. the bottom of the cup and then dry it off. Where are we doing this? Down here. I gotcha. So we'll take the tip of the bristles, just pick a leaf, let's just pick this one. And go down the center loosely. We don't want to like do a complete perfect line. I'm just kind of loosely flicking the brush in there. And then you can add some detail work to some of these. Not really detail work, that's not the right word. We're just making them pop out a little better because this, this is all dry now, so now it will show. That area's kind of giving me a little bit of fits. <laughs> I'm by no means trying to paint a realistic uh, leaf here. It's just loose, they're loose leaves. Yeah, avocados, man, I try. I always try buying them from Costco because it's such a good deal, but then it's like, not ripe, not ripe, not ripe. Guess what? We're getting a giant bowl of guacamole now. They're all ripe. They all ripen at the same time, and so there is that, that downside. Yeah, you, you might save some money versus buying six avocados at the regular grocery store, but you have to eat them all in one day, <laughs> practically. You can add a drop of water to this paint if it feels like your brush is really running out super fast. I love doing this because you can get a lot out of it. I ended up with more leaves than what's on my original. That's okay. This is a nice healthy plant with a lot of, a lot of green leaves going on. <laughs> Wash that brush. I'm going to take a sip of my beverage. So we're done with the little brush for now. I'm going to wash my medium sized brush too. So what we're going to do next is we're going to convert our hydrangea blooms from being mostly purple to mostly blue. Now you decide if you really like the purple. And oh, no, never mind. I missed a step. I knew it. I knew something was off here. Liar! <laughs> I knew something was off here. I was looking at going, okay, something's wrong here. Okay, let's go back to our medium brush. We need to create the leaves for and the stem for the rose. I did this super loose and easy. So you can see that there just hugs hugs the rosebud. These are so, I did them so fast, and then I just did one or two leaves coming out of the bottom of the rose. We've already got the green paint. One thing I wanna do, I want to actually mix a little bit of Bahama Blue to it. So it's a slightly different shade. So that's your avocado color. And you know what, I'm gonna actually put a little bit of blue back in it. So the Bahama Blue that we put in is going to turn the shade a, diff a different shade of green than what we use down here, which we want, it's a different plant. And for the rose, I'm just going to use this brush and just go right down to the hydrangea. We can paint a flower, hydrangea flower right over that because it looks kind of awkward where it meets. And then I'll just do a, a leaf off of here. It's kind of like an elongated almond shape. It can go behind this rose and pop out the other side, um, or mine just kind of runs into it. And I'll do another leaf over here that goes off the side of the canvas. 
Now we do need to make this hug the rosebud. So I just do like a rounded V shape. And then you could even do another little, little one in the center if you want. And let's go ahead and add a nice long leaf here. You don't have to if you decide that you don't like that look. You don't have to do that at all. I kind of like how it sort of breaks up these two just a bit. Um, and you can, you can add any other leaves anywhere. Oh yeah, so Kristen just noticed that we're live. Not gotten the kit yet. Yes, they, they shipped on, when did they ship, Paul? Thursday and Friday. Thursday and Friday, so that'll be arriving tomorrow most likely if you're, well, if you're local to us. Depending on where you live. It's like three days to the Midwest, five days to the East Coast. But yeah, we decided uh, we'd start doing the videos um, because they were kind of just popping up whenever. <laughs> we didn't really have a good set schedule. We decided we would start doing them, post them by the 7th and by the 15th. And you can participate. And that way people yeah. don't have to wait for us. You don't have us. to wait, yeah. Especially, like, we were thinking about the holiday paintings we do. Like, it's kind of a bummer to do a, a like, a Christmas painting or, like, a wintery theme painting, holiday theme, when you are, like, the holidays are almost over. So we thought, okay, let's get them posted by the beginning of the month and the middle of the month. So that was our thought process there. All righty. I'm just looking at my... Picture. Yeah, let's go back to what I was going to do before. Okay, so we are going to turn these more blue. Unless you really want to just stick with the purple, just make another shade of a lighter shade of the lavender. And to, to convert this, let's have a look at the original. See the difference? Quite a big difference. I basically, what I want to do now is I want to create a, uh, it's, it's not this lightest blue, it's, it's kind of this, this color down in here. And that is done by mixing Bahama Blue with Sapphire. Let's start with just equal parts. So scrape off a little Sapphire, plop it down here. Running out of room on my palette. Scrape off equal amount of Bahama. And yes, this is about the color I want to start with. So these are layered so much. They go gradually adding, 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 layering, layering, layering. This one's going to feel really like it just pops out all of a sudden. It's probably gonna hurt your brain a little bit because it's such a different color and it's lighter than anything we've put on there. Just need to mix that in a little more. So let's go ahead and just dab on some of this. Occasionally just push your brush down so you get some larger. Don't be afraid to make them overlap each other. They would do that. I'm focusing up here because my, I'm thinking of my light sources. I made my light source be up here so that this is getting light. This is going to be more in shadow. In the shadow, shadow da do. <laughs> and I'll get a few over here. In the shadow da 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 do. We haven't karaoke in a year. <laughs> we karaoke at home all the time. Well, we do. <laughs> I play piano and sing and Paul plays guitar and sings so that's a lot of what we do <laughs> when we're not painting do you realize like how like people are like yeah right you do you know it's <laughs> like, people, like about people, it. do, do people really do that yeah we do <laughs> so I want to I do want to bring a few out this way I think the best way to handle that without losing this nice bright where light source looks like it's right here, I think the best way to, to deal with that is to wipe most of the brush, most of the paint off your brush on your towel, paper towel, whatever you're using, and just use that hazy leftover stuff to get a few down in here. 
So then they're not as opaque and bright, but the color is definitely there. And I promise in a bit we're, we're going to start making more closer to flower shapes without doing complete detailed flowers. Think about all the colors we have in these. There's so many. I might pop one over here. Okay, wash the brush. I want to detail these leaves now that they are dry or mostly dry. I still have the color. So that was your avocado green, which was the uh, daffodil and sapphire, more daffodil and sapphire, little Bahama blue mixed into it. So you've got a different shade of green, like a bluer green. And where's my medium brush? There it is. I'm gonna add a little white to that. Just a little at a time. This is about the shade I want. What would you call this color? Jade. Yeah, it's kind of jade color, I guess. And I'm just gonna outline this leaf. You can use your smallest brush if you want. I'm just using the thin edge of this medium brush. Put a vein down the center. And then you can do some loose little hint of some veins like we did down here. And then on this guy, I want to highlight the left edge because that's our light source over here. Give the leaves the same treatment, slight outline, or loose outline, I should say. Mainly what I'm trying to do is get the color, the streaks of color, the streaks of light and dark on there. And I'll get these little the part. I'm sure it has a scientific name. That thing <laughs> that holds the the rosebud in. It's just drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank on that scientific name right now. Sorry, I can't help you on that one tonight. <laughs> Normally, I'm good on that, even with flowers. But tonight, I got nothing. Google is our friend. Okay, somebody Google it real quick. <laughs> All right. Let's take now, I'm going to put this in the water because it's not really clean. Let's take our medium brush now. And I'm going to use this color that we were just putting on here, I'm gonna put just a touch more Bahama Blue into it. So lighten it maybe a shade. And this is where I'm gonna show you a fun trick. It took me a bit to get this figured out. But you can create a flower shape by pressing your brush down and put, putting your brush down and pushing out. Oops. So we don't want to do too many of these because we really want it to look pretty loose and bordering on um, impressionist. But you can see on the original, I do have some like that that have four or five petals. I think these have five petals. I looked at them. I looked at pictures of them. And sometimes when I was designing this, I had to go back and blot some out because I was trying to get too detailed. But you can see none of these are very detailed. We've done something similar in class at the studio and I've told the students to paint popcorn shapes or amoebas even. Like a, <laughs> if you've ever looked at an amoeba under a microscope, they're just blobs. Blobs with a little structure. So I'll just set my brush down. Let's see how it would work with your brush, Paul. You gonna steal my brush? Yeah, or I can grab one if there's one. Yeah, there's one behind me. one's kind of crispy. Never got washed very well. So that's this brush. A lot of you guys have that. When you dampen it and kind of loosen those bristles up. Wait, what color are we doing these? So that's, uh, I just mixed a little bit more Bahama Blue to that color. So it's just a shade or two lighter. Okay, let's see how this one works. 
Wow, you've damaged that brush. <laughs> what makes you think that? Because we could all hear it. <laughs> so pop it down and then press out. This makes them actually more, a little more impressionist. But partly this brush is older, crispy, and frayed. But you can do the same sort of thing with that brush. I kind of like these. I think these are really cool looking. Okay. Blobs, amoeba shapes, popcorn puff shapes. <laughs> Try not to overdo it. Focus on these sides, the left, kind of left curve of each of these, so that we get that light source coming in there. My mom has, a, she has a lace leaf. I think that's what it's called, lace leaf hydrangea. They're mm -hmm. really different. They have, a, the center is really big and has lots of these little things in it. And then the, these big blooms are on the outside of the center. They're really cool. She has just about every flower. <laughs> My mom has a half acre property and she's done it all like English garden style so it's a lot of wild looking lots of different heights and and different flowers like roses and hydrangeas and dahlias and it's really neat I love her garden she's she's worked hard on it <laughs> then my dad has his corner which has all his car stuff so I'm working over on this side now if you find yourself painting too many perfect flowers, I mean, if you like the look, you can you can stick with it. It's really, in the end, it's, it's what you like. But if you are not liking it, it's looking like too much like you're trying to over detail, then force yourself to throw in some blobs. I think that one of the things that's really uh, easy for people to fall into the trap of on this is really evenly spacing and yeah. floating them, too. And not letting them overlap each other. I definitely fall into that. Like, here, I have a tendency to kind of space them apart too much. And they would, they do overlap. You can look at pictures. Maybe once in a while, just do a single petal, like I just did there. I like that because then you're you're getting a variance of different sizes and and I've got that in the original, too. I'm running out of paint. <laughs> so if you do run out of paint, just try and mix the same, similar color, but if it's a slightly different shade, well, then that just goes with all these different things we've been adding in here as we go along. <laughs> And what I'll do at this point is just kind of let my brush run out of paint by dabbing on little petals and as I add more paint to the brush. But down in here I do want to do like we did last time where we just a little whisper of paint on the brush just for the occasional bit of brightness. I feel like I need something right here. If you feel like you need to overlap the leaves at all down in here, let me push that up here, you can go back to make maybe make that purple color, like this one here, the, the kind of darker lavender. Or even a completely different shade that goes with everything, but you want it to be on the darker side. And you can overlap if needed. Maybe I'll mix a little of this blue in there. Ooh, that's a cool color. 
So this is only if it feels like the leaves are on top of the blooms, which we don't want. We want the blooms on top of the leaves. So if you have that situation, just put some well-placed blobs that overlap those leaves. And then just have a look. We can always go back and add more little hydrangea flower petals. I feel like these leaves need a, a low light to them because I feel like they're just kind of blah, little, little plain, and the original ones have a bit more streakiness of light and dark going on. So I'm going to... If you have some of this dark teal left, that's a great color to use, but if you need to remake it, it was just sapphire and ruby, about equal parts. And I'll just streak a little of that loosely. So the highlights on the left, we want the, the darker part to be on the right. And this can help detail the, the little rosebud holders. <laughs> Mainly we're just, we're trying to, to get a different color streaked in there with the others. Give it a little more depth. And we're gonna wash that brush off. In. Now we're not done with all this. We've still got a little bit left to do with the rose and um, we've got to put the centers in some of these little hydrangea petals, hydrangea blooms. But we're going to paint this seafoam green background in. I love this color. It's, it's not this blue, it's, it's this underneath the green. My brother had a Fender Stratocaster. His very first guitar was that color and we just called it the seafoam green. <laughs> Foam green guitar. That's the name of the color. <laughs> yep, so we're going to use our biggest brush. Get this out of here. And this is a pretty easy arrangement to paint around. I did one recently at home that had like stems of eucalyptus and all kinds of stuff going on, and that took a while, and I changed the background. That's when I changed the background color on a couple times, too, so it was like, ah, it was a lot of work, but it was satisfying, and I needed some stress relief, so it worked out good. Okay, to make seafoam green, we mix Bahama Blue, Daffodil, and White, and let's see how much. It's less white. Let's do about equal parts. Bahama and Daffodil. And you could just use this color if you like that. I did add just a tiny bit of white to it. That's what's going to turn it more of like a true seafoam green. Yeah, flicking paint everywhere. Let's start at the top and just loose, loose choppy brush strokes. You can see on the original you can see some bits of where the paint's thin and you see that charcoal gray through there. I love that look so much. And if you don't like it, just go ahead and do a nice opaque background. But if you like the look of that original background, just do what I'm doing. Loose, choppy brush strokes. As we work our way down towards the flowers, don't be nervous. First time I did a painting like this, I was really nervous. Like, oh, I'm gonna overlap and undo everything, but if you overlap something, it's so easy to fix. One of the things I love about this, doing it this way, is you can, it almost slightly outlines the things that you've been working on. So like you'll see a tiny shred of that gray so around the, the object. When OCD people try to be like looser, that they still get that satisfaction of having an <laughs> That's outline. That's it. You know, we don't really need your commentary. <laughs> <laughs> So I really use that chisel edge of the brush as I get around the flower. Some of these little spikier parts, I'm just going to paint over them. So I like a nice rounded bloom in the end. 
There's an artist which, if you guys have a minute, you should all look up. He does most of his paintings this way, where the background is painted in later. They're oil paintings for the most part. And I've mentioned him on our channel before because I just love his style, the looseness of how he works, the colors, everything. And he paints these crazy, magnificent, cloudy skies. Uh, he's based, I think, in New Mexico, but he might have moved to Arizona. Uh, the name is William Hawkins. And I got to see his art for the very first time because my sister-in-law bought a couple original pieces and... When I went to her house, I was like, who is this artist? So I stalked him on Instagram. It's a great page. William Hawkins Art. Spell just how it sounds. Highly recommend you have a look. Maybe you'll buy some pieces. But definitely this style with the background painted in later. Even with the great big clouds and trees. And it just has that really cool effect. If you feel like you need to use a little bit smaller brush around the edges here, you can do that. I do like to, like I came in just a little bit here so that I don't have this perfectly sculpted round like someone came in with hedge clippers like Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> so I'll occasionally bump in to create it, keep it from being too popcorn ball round. How are you liking painting the background in later, Paul? I'm trying to make it work with the way I paint, so. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, you might be surprised with how it turns out. <laughs> so this is the part I just, I love the, the transformation here. And the parts that are harder to get around are actually the, the, this sort of thing. This is easy to go around, but these more shaped out pieces. A little harder. I'm really utilizing that chisel edge. So I'm curious when if you guys are going to try this out. I would love to know what you thought if it felt... If you like doing the background this way. Because I, I can definitely do more paintings this way because I, I love... As I've mentioned over and over, I do love the style and the way it looks in the end. And it's, it's good for me to do something different outside of my norm. Who's this norm you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I do need to switch down to a little bit smaller brush. I'll go down to my medium. Or if you've got the red set, like this number four flat is perfect. I'll just grab that. But your, your medium six would be great too. So Paul went thrifting today. I did. With our daughter who's, you know, she's in high school, so she's really into that vintage thrifting thing, which I was totally into in high school. She bought a Def Leppard Hysteria t-shirt, and I was like, okay. Wow. She's like, who's Def Leppard? I'm like, <laughs> this is cool. Who is it? <laughs> I was like, okay, that's what we're listening to on the way home then. So what'd she think? She's like, oh, I've heard this. <laughs> Yeah, we always tell her, if you're going to wear a like, band t-shirt, you got to listen to the band at least once. Come on. <laughs> okay, so the background can just dry, and we're going to add some straight-up Bahama Blue to it in a little bit. If you've got any spots, I'll just like have a look and see if there's any parts I want to add just a little more paint to. Sometimes I get a little thin around the, the objects I'm painting around because I'm being too careful. And we don't really want it to look like that we're being careful. <laughs> we want to look, make it look like this all came naturally and was so easy. So if you have that problem, just pound a little more paint in there. But so far, so good. Right on track. It's looking just like the original. This color, we're going to use it again, but in a different spot, and I'll show you where. So we decided, though, that thrifting is going to be part of our Sunday morning routine, or Saturday morning routine. Fun. Or Sunday morning. Normally Saturday morning, but we've got a different routine right now with the puppy training. 
You guys should go into that curiosity shop. There. That place is overpriced. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Okay, so I'm going to use my medium brush. This is my number eight. I think I might have called it number six a minute ago. Or if you're using the round, the, uh, the white set, you'll use your medium round or your small round, either one. This same color, which, gosh, I used most of it, so I'm going to make a little bit more. That was Bahama Blue, Daffodil Yellow, and White. You want it more on the blue side, less on the yellow side. And I'll show you where I'm going to put this. So I was super, super um, kind of messy, loose when I did this. I highlighted the left side of some of these leaves and then like it, other spots like this one I highlighted the right side just thinking of the light source and everything. Not a ton of paint. If you have a lot of paint on your brush from mixing, wipe it off. So you just have what I call a ghost layer of paint. And I'm just going to streak it in here on some of these leaves. If you don't want to do this and you like your leaves and you don't want to touch them anymore then please feel free to just leave this off. <laughs> leave. Leave it off. This was just me um, pull, balancing the background color with what's down here just by adding highlights. And you can do that with some of these other leaves too. Just don't go overkill on it, especially up here because it can just get lost in the background. But down in here, you can definitely freely scribble I'm not painting any specific shapes, really. It's just a highlight. Over here, it's this part's really going to be pretty much in shadow because of the way this is laid out. In the shadow. And now I painted this on here. It looks like actually it looks like it's part of the background now. Oh well, I can paint over it with green, the darker green, if I wanted to, or just leave it because it doesn't really affect anything. But that's about all I'll add. I could go through and add more, but I think it's real easy to, to get lost in, in the background. I don't want to do too much. Okay. Let's go in. And um, I want to add some Bahama Blue highlights on some of these flowers. You'll see them here. Like everything else, I just kept it really loose and free. And I just like did a little curved line on some of these that maybe look a little more flower petal shaped. And if they are not flower petal shaped, if they're more of a blob shape, you can do these little curved highlights and they'll become more flower shaped. So thinking of the light source being over here, that's, you're going to hit the left side of these flower petals. Now brush wise, if you're using that white set, I would use your smallest brush. If you're using the red set, I think we can get away with using this little number four flat, but you might find it a little easier to use the little one. This is a pretty small brush, and so the tendency to have it look over detailed is really high, and I want it to be pretty loose, so I'm going to use this number four flat. I think when I put it together, I used the uh, second, small, or second largest brush, number eight. All these numbers. <laughs> it sounds like math. So test out a couple. See what you like. Maybe on larger flowers, use a larger brush. Maybe on the small ones, a smaller. So I, I, what I did just now is I dipped my brush in the Bahama Blue and I purposely brushed it off on the palette somewhere. These palettes are awesome, by the way. They're $6, I think, on our website. It's 50 sheets of wax paper that uh, you can just peel it off, roll it up, throw it away when you're done. And the paint doesn't absorb like it does in a paper plate. So I love them. They're great. I was so happy to discover those. Well, let's go ahead and pick some flowers and just put a random little curved highlight on some of these. Don't overdo it. Don't get too detailed. But look at that. It looks really neat. It looks like there's almost like a shine coming in from the light source here. They're shiny flowers. And they don't necessarily look quite like flowers yet. We still have to put the little centers in. That's going to help a lot. Even if you just have a blob, it's going to turn it into a flower. Oh, 
Obviously these down here are not going to have so much. You might once in a while pick one to give it a little pop, but for the most part it's going to be up in here, like we've been doing. But not up in here. Not up in here. Oh, you have little delicate flowers. That's unusual for you. What are you talking about? When I paint flowers, I paint flowers. <laughs> No, you don't usually paint things that are delicate. I do when I paint flowers. I don't know if I've ever seen you paint flowers. I paint flowers all the time. You paint like little dots for That's flowers. Not true. I've got that one uh, trillium flower little painting that's in. I forgot about that. That we've got. And... But even that's not really super like delicate. Your style's definitely like you use the brush differently than I do. I think uh, our styles combined would be the perfect painter. <laughs> it's like rough without rough and slightly detailed. Maybe. Greta. The hope is on Greta, our daughter. She's got the art talent, but she hates painting. And I think it's because of Van Gogh. All, she was five when we started the company, and we were, in the beginning, we were gone all the time just building the company. Well, one of us was home with her. We just kind of took turns, but I know she has a little animosity from it feeling like we were never home together all the time. So this is, Go Box is great. Thanks, guys. <laughs> we love it. We love doing these. And here we too. are. She's home alone. <laughs> she's, well, now she's at the age, though, where it, she wants to be home, like, you know, when they're five, they want you around all the time. Yeah, I don't know why. When they're uh, when they're older, they're like, I'm going to go to my room now for the next five hours. <laughs> there's a streamer I want to watch. Yeah, there's a YouTube streamer I have to watch. Ew, the puppy pooped. <laughs> we are totally tossing her under the bus. That's not fair. <laughs> She'll never watch this video. We're not cool enough, so... We don't you know have what? to worry about it. Her friend tuned into <laughs> one of our videos, one of our live streams. Oops, Grace okay. did, and she was like... Your parents are weird. They only have like four people watching. <laughs> okay, let's add some white highlights to the rose. And I think I'm going to use... Just looking at these brushes. If you have the white set, use the smallest brush. If you have the red set, let's use number four. If you have the orange set... Probably the smallest brush or, or the next one up, which I don't know what the number is. Okay, so white paint here. Same thing, I'm gonna dip it in, brush it off on the palette, and I'll, uh, so think of our light source up here, so on the rose. I thought of these as being like the tippy tops of some of those folds and petals that are sticking up, so they're gonna catch the light. Around here, we catch the light. Um, I purposely kind of made this a little more angular just to to not have it look so confined into the shape it was in. Now <laughs> I need to do this paint again. Uh, let's start there. Let's just do a little highlight along the edge. So I'm just tucking some white highlights in and keeping those, you definitely want to keep that dark burgundy-ish color somewhat, like some of it showing. And you can overlap into the background. So I would say I'm primarily going over the pink parts of the flower. It's pretty transformative. What we're doing right now. We're, it's one of those things, the ooh and ah moment with the highlights. It's kind of like when we do paint your pet and you put the highlights in the eyes. And everybody's like, I see it now. <gasps> I'm painting a uh, Highland cow right now for Jen. I, you, I know you watch these videos, so you're probably going to see this. I actually restarted it because I wanted to get back to it and just start fresh. And so I'm loving the way it turned out. It is turning out. It'll probably be done by the next time we're up at Skamania. <coughs> Incoming. <laughs> Speaking of Skamania Lodge, we're back up there. Oh, we're up there in like two weeks, aren't we? Yep. We're back up there uh, every third Saturday um, starting this month. So that's... Not uh, every third Saturday. 
I mean, the third Saturday of every month. Is that, did I say it right? You always have to correct me. Third what? Saturday of every month. Not every third Saturday. Third Saturday of every month. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be up there teaching live. You can join in on the class if you live local. You don't have to be an overnight guest of the lodge. You can go to the bar, get a, get a drink, and come back to class, and we'll just teach you live how to paint. It's on their website, the painting. Okay, so now I'm going to put a few white highlights on this little rosebud. So the light source is primarily going to be over here. You can do a little backlighting bit on that side, but primarily over here. Make sure you don't cover up all the red. One thing you can do too, you can come in with a little thicker white paint here and there on some of the edges of these white highlights and just give it that extra little pop. Wash the brush now. We're almost in. Getting real close. I'm going to come in now with just Bahama Blue with this big brush. I'm not going to use a lot of paint. Just going to dip it in, pick up just about this amount. You can see there's just a little roll of paint on there. I think that's how Bob Ross used to say it. And what I did is I started at the top and I just did these sort of all different direction choppy brush strokes working my way down. I didn't want to cover all the seafoam green because that color is just so pretty and works so good here. But I do like adding this bit of Bahama Blue it really ties in with these colors. And the cool thing, guys, if you decide you don't like this color background once you've done it and you want like a gray background, go for it. Uh, Rachel, I know, does a lot of bright colored flower paintings with gray backgrounds and they look so good. I just have a tendency to lean towards bright colors like, like a bumblebee. I'm looking for the bright things. We have enough gray in Oregon, I guess. So as I get down here towards the flowers, I just kind of let that color dissipate off my brush. And you decide how much you want. I think that's probably pretty good. For me and then the last step we do pull this over here they're actually they're really close they came out almost identical uh, we do the centers and the flowers and that's done with the seafoam green color if you have any of that left if not make some more that was daffodil yellow Bahama blue and white and I actually, I know a lot of times we use the handle of the brush and po poke it in the paint and then poke the centers on. You can do it that way, but this time around I decided to be a little more loose and I um, just used the brush end. I'm going to flip this around. Oh, Paul, you did extra flower buds. That looks good. We'll, we'll show Paul's here in a minute. Better hurry up and finish, Paul. I'm working on it. <laughs> Seafoam green. I'm going to add a little drop of water to that because I didn't make quite enough paint and just cheating here. And then when you add the little dot to these, just pick what looks like it might be the center of a flower. The center of the blob. They've got that. Like that's a blob. There's no flower thing going on there, but when you add a center, it's a flower. We've done several paintings over the years in the studio with flowers where it's like it starts off as a blob and you add a center it's like whoa there's the flower make sure that you add some centers down in here too even if it's just like a tiny little single petal we do want it to look like it's they're all the same thing it's just they're down in the dark okay i'm gonna move over here now How hard is your painting next week? Brace yourselves. <laughs> no, I don't think it'll be that bad. I'm not too worried about it. I'm sure I'll do fine. I think that, 
<laughs> yeah, you'll do fine. I think on that painting, what I looked at and thought would be the most challenging for maybe people who haven't painted a lot would be that rock wall. Oh, that's actually probably the easiest part of the painting. How funny. Okay, I mean, from a technique standpoint. So what's the hardest part? Um, the field? Letting go. Let's show it again for people who just tuned in. Letting go. This is what we're doing next week live. So I think the rock wall will be just the hardest to wrap your brain around, but yeah. It's more about letting wrapping go. your brain around <laughs> it, and it's really, it really is about just letting go on this one. Let it go, let it go. Okay, I want to sign my painting now. Hold and on. Okay, you can go ahead and sign yours. I'm going to use my littlest brush and pick a color. Uh, the color that you did in the, with the rose would be a great color to use. I don't know. That's just my thought right now. My instant came to my brain thought. Uh, I have a little bit left. I'll just mix a little water with it. I always just put my initials in. Anytime I use a little brush where I have to write something or trace something, I will always mix a little water with the paint. In there. Over the years, I've just developed a couple little loops that make up my signature. I'm almost done. Talk. Okay. But there we go. I don't think I missed anything. I loosely followed those instructions. Sometimes the timing's a little off because of drying time, so... And I forgot the stems for a little bit, but we got them on there. And that is it. I'm curious to know how you guys liked it, how, how easy it was, how hard it was, all of that. Other flowers you might like to paint as we get into the better weather months. And we appreciate you guys watching with us and painting with us. Those of you who subscribe to the kits, thank you so much. It's It's been great. It's been great to see it grow. All right, there you go. Let's show Paul's. Okay, let's push this out of the way. I'll trade you. So his style is very different than mine with every painting. But yeah, you can see I was saying his, his flowers are a little smaller and delicate, more delicate. I kind of got a little wonky on my rose because it, oh, you know what, I didn't get the extra Bahama smudged in. But it's okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I like the background color. I ended up having my rose kind of facing the front a little bit more than I would have wanted. I like this. I've got the wrapped around little uh, thing here where it looks like the one petal overlaps the other. But yeah, turned out good. Good. It turned out good. Okay. That's it. Let's go back. Let's zoom out. Let's zoom out. Here we is. Here we are. My mug in my face. <laughs> my mug in my mug. Thanks for joining us. Um, if you just do our videos and, and paint along and don't do the kits, uh, you can. if you want to subscribe to the channel, that would be awesome. You can click the notifications and, and get notified every time we do these Rogue Live videos <laughs> like we did tonight. Yep. And uh, we have a Patreon and a coffee account you can donate to, which is very helpful. Links are down yes. below. <laughs> yes, links are down below. I personally like the coffee one better. Yeah, coffee's kind of like a one-time donation thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how Patreon works, but... Uh, yeah, Patreon can be that way, too. Uh, I just think coffee seems a little bit more direct and uh, we may end up... Uh, YouTube has a new option to be able to, you know, like do a monthly... Uh, membership where you get like a badge that you're uh, subs you know subscriber and we're gonna set that up too okay. so if you if you really like it and you want to you know help support us because you know we do put a lot of time and effort into these and it really do is you? nice when people give us a little kickback and we, we appreciate that very much yep uh, and shout out to you guys across the pond over there in England I know we've had a lot of people the reach UK. out to us the UK yes the UK sorry I need to update myself uh thank you so much for uh, a lot of you guys have reached out yeah. and enjoyed doing the videos i love that we can reach over there yeah. across the world so we had a, a subscription go to kuwait this month yes we did we have one going to kuwait how about month. that yeah all over the place so thanks you guys have a great rest of your evening and we'll see you next week for irish ruins irish ruins yep wear your green wear your green <laughs> cheers y'all bye bye